Hi and welcome. In this tutorial we're going to do Maya hair, which you'll find in your dynamic section. So, to start off, all hair is set up in this little node here called hair. So we'll just get this menu aside. And in this tutorial I'll just show you what a few of these menus will do and how to create hairs and how to edit them in the attribute editor. So to start off we need something to paint the hairs on or apply the hairs to so we can plant a surface. Get a surface sphere in your scene. You can also use polygons and substitute surfaces if you want. So the first tool we've got is create hairs. So we've got on this little option box. You've got a bunch of options here. So the first is output. Output that basically says what type of hairs do you want to go on this surface over here. So paint effects that just gives you the default paint effects. Nerves curves that just creates nerve curves and paint effects and nerves curves creates both and there's some advantages to that as well. So we'll just stick with paint effects to start off with. There's create rest curves, we'll come at that later. Uh, there's U and V count, which this is U and V around the surface, so how many hairs to create. So we'll just reset this to you for that eight. Passive fills. What passive fills does is when Maya works out where to plant hair, it places hair follicles on the how many U and V you put. So if you put passive fills, it's going to pl place um, hair follicles in between these U and V that Maya calculates and just use the calculations from these. So it doesn't work out passive fills, it just gives it more depth and puts more hairs in. Randomization, what this will do is, if you increase randomization, if you had zero randomization like here, it's going to place these hair follicles evenly around the surface so they're all going to spread out evenly. If you put randomization up what's going to happen is some hairs will clump around here and then you'll have a bald spot here so they'll just randomly place around the surface. So to start off with we'll just create those hairs and as you can see you just create a lot of hairs here so we'll just put the frames up and if we play that back these are just going to act like normal default hairs. Right, to start off with, we'll just say, in here, this is the hair follicle. And all these hairs that around this follicle is like a clump attached to that follicle. As you can see, like, this thing here, that's one clump attached to this follicle down here. And these are the paint effects curves. And if you had nerves curves, that would run through the middle. So, to select that. And then you can go to this hair system shape node, which is all the hair system, including the follicles and everything. So to start with, we've got a few tools here. So our hairs per clump. What that'll do is, each one of these clumps is a follicle. So hairs per clump is basically how many hairs you want around each follicle. So if we increase that, as you can see, around each follicle is more, hair, more and more hairs. So it's just increasing it. Sub segments, so I'll just move this down one so you can e easily see it. When you play this back, as you can see, that's just a straight edge, it's not very smooth. If you render that, it's not going to look very good, it's just not very hair like. So, if you increase sub segments, basically that's going to increase just about like the vertices on this curve of a hair of a paint effect. So it's just going to make it much more smoother when you render. Thinning. So if we increase these hairs a bit more. If you watch. Like we'll just get there. What thinning does is. As you can see. Every single hair stops dead. Right at the same position. So you might want that effect. But when you render that out. If this was an animation of someone's hair. It all stop at the same point. So it wouldn't look natural. So if you increase thinning, what this is going to do is it thins the edge so they randomly stop at different points. So one's going to be a bit longer, one's going to be shorter, and it'll just gradually get to the last point. So as you look, that already looks a bit more smooth and a bit more natural. Clump twist. So if we come back to the clumps here, which is like each hair follicle. Clump twist, all that does is just twist your clump around. And what we're going to do is, if your system starts to freeze, like there's too much hair, 
if you turn down this display quality area, it's at 100, so that's like 100%. Turn this down to 11 or something. As you can see, there's less hairs in the viewport, so it's much, much easier to move around. And if you had a load of hairs, you might have to slow your system down. It's a good idea to use this. But you might think this looks rubbish, but if you render, as you can see, the display quality only changes what's in the viewport. It doesn't change how many hairs are going to be displayed in the render. So if you render that with display quality 12, or if you re-render it when it's back to 100, it's going to be the same. So display quality only changes what's in the viewport. So turn that down. Right, we've got clump width, which is the width at which the clumps are. So if you can change that to how you like. It's just increasing like the diameter from this follicle. Hair width, that's the actual hair lines. So you won't see anything going on in here, but for instance, if we control and click here, you can increase it like that. If we render this, just give it a few seconds. What's going to happen is, because we've increased the hair width, each one of these 23 hairs per clump is going to be that width, so it'll take a while to render. Also, you can change the clump. All right. Ah. <laughs> we'll make me to just take them down to one again. Take that down there. As you can see, you can't see it really clearly, but we've put it down to one, so each one of these is one hair at width one. So it just increases the thickness. So we'll put that right back down again. And there's a clump width scale. So if you look at one of these hairs, as you can see it's quite thick to begin with. It maintains that thickness and it slowly smooths off and gets really thin before you can't see it anymore, the way it disappears. And that's what this little graph here it starts off really thick and it slowly goes to about zero. So you can change that to how you like. If you want a wiry look, you can just keep it all straight. So that just lets it slowly just curl off at the end. So just fading off slightly. The hair width scale. Oh, wait, that was the clump width scale, sorry. What that'll do is the clump will start further apart and then get narrow together. The hair width scale will keep the width the same as it goes along and then when it gets to this little point here near the end it's going to drop in width and get smaller and thinner until eventually it just goes. Then clump curl, yeah if you want to twist and curl the hair around and clump flatness. So that's a bit about that. We'll just go down to dynamics. There's a bit of things you can set here like stiffness if you want the hair to be stiff but we'll just come back here. So, also, in hair, if it's too big or small, you can click the scale hair tool, which basically you click, and you can increase the hair or decrease to whatever length you want. So we'll just put that to start. So you just click and drag, and it'll just change the length. And if you want to get rid of a hair system, you just go hair, delete entire hair system. Then if you go in your outliner, there's no hair system at all, it's deleted all the elements. To do that you've just you've got to select one element of the hair system and it'll do it all. Right, in the next lesson we'll move on to a bit about different dynamic curves and how to make more hair more dynamic.